Thursday, welcome into LCPioneers.com Live, presented by PioStream, with you four days a week, Tuesday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time, streaming live on Facebook. You can find us easily by going to LCPioneers.com slash live, and all of our shows available to watch on demand inside the fan zone at LCPioneers.com or at YouTube.com slash LCPios, keeping you connected with different members of the Lewis and Clark College community, student-athletes, coaches, and alumni. Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan Goff. I am the play-by-play voice and director of athletic communications for Lewis and Clark, the pioneers out of Portland, Oregon, and a member of the Northwest Conference competing with nine total institutions, including ourselves in the northwest part of Oregon and the state of Washington, and over 430 institutions nationwide thanks to NCAA Division III, a chance for our student-athletes to compete on a national stage in 19 intercollegiate athletics programs. Also, with overseas study at Lewis and Clark, a chance to experience the globe, of course, in non-pandemic times. Uh, with our overseas study program, it's really an experiential liberal arts education. Uh, today, our guest in a few minutes will be head coach of women's soccer at Lewis and Clark, Jim Tercy, uh, one of the longer-tenured coach at, uh, coaches at Lewis and Clark, and really in NCAA Division Three. So we'll talk to Coach Tercy about the oddity that was the fall 2020 semester. No competition for women's soccer like normally in the fall. Still potential uh, for spring competition for his team. So what was that like for the first year student athletes who joined Lewis and Clark this year? What's it look like for recruiting? We have a whole lot of questions for Coach Tercy coming up in a few minutes from now. If you have a question to ask or you have a recommendation for a future guest, we invite you to get in touch with us in the Facebook Live comments. We always appreciate that. You can also email us anytime. Sports at lclark.edu. Uh, that is our email address if maybe you have a suggestion for a future guest as well. We are on social media as well, Twitter and Instagram, both of the handles there, LC Pioneers. You can find us there as well as Facebook, Snapchat, and YouTube. And we do keep in the loop with everything that's going on with Northwest Conference competition. Announced on Monday, a joint statement between Lewis and Clark and Willamette talking about specifically high-risk sports. Here's the statement that's available on lcpioneers.com. In consideration of restrictions in the state of Oregon and the health and safety of our student-athletes and wider campus and local communities, Lewis and Clark and Willamette announced with regret the cancellation of their football and men's and women's basketball seasons for 2020-21. We understand this news is disappointing to our students and campus communities, State restrictions on competition are unlikely to change as football and basketball are considered high-risk sports by the NCAA, and the experiences of some colleges and universities have shown this to be true, even with strong safety protocols in place. This difficult decision was made after discussions with our Northwest Conference colleagues. We will continue to work with the Oregon Health Authority and the Northwest Conference to develop plans to return, if possible, to safe competition in lesser-risk sports. For those student-athletes not competing this spring, we will continue to find meaningful ways for them to engage in athletic and physical activities. So that is the statement specifically regarding football and men's and women's basketball. Women's soccer, in the case of Coach Tercy, is not a high-risk sport. So again, that is still possible a return to competition sometime in the spring. And on that note, all of our COVID-19-related updates are on our website, lcpioneers.com slash covid so things coming from the NCAA that we pass along or the Northwest Conference, they released a statement on Tuesday. Those are linked through at lcpioneers.com slash COVID. Last thing we want to make you aware of, too, is our YouTube playlist. As I mentioned, we keep updating this with all of our past interviews. You can find us youtube.com slash lcpios. And of course, all of our past interviews available in the fan zone at lcpioneers.com. Let's bring in our guest for today long-tenured coach of women's soccer at Lewis and Clark. We are proud and thankful to welcome back in Coach Jim Tercy to the show. And Coach, I appreciate you being here because I've been asking this question a lot of some of our uh, longer-tenured coaches because nobody anticipates a pandemic when they're getting ready to become a college head coach or a college student-athlete, right? So I'm curious for you, you know, how did the fall go with all the adjustments that you likely had to make? Well, I say for me, you know, it's 30 some years of uh, coaching in the fall, uh, having games and weekends, uh, not having it was was quite different. But in the end, I think it was really a good experience for me to, to experience something of this sort, having players come in, especially the freshmen who have not seen really or know who they are, what kind of persons they are, and able to work with them without the stress or pressure of not knowing if they're playing or, you know, what I might think of them or what the other players may think of them. 
I think it was a very relaxed um, environment. It was nice for me not to manage a team in the sense of managing egos or managing time on the field. So, again, not having a loss on our record, um, I think everybody was happy. And that was a, really a positive for me. Um, the stress wasn't there. I think that the older players really appreciated seeing the freshmen play um, in an environment for them that wasn't under stress. Um, I think everybody got to see everybody in a different light that they would normally not see them uh, in a fall season where you're playing every weekend and, and worrying about if I'm playing or not. So I thought it was a great experience for me. I think the players experienced the same thing. I, I felt that anyway. I think everybody was excited about seeing that freshman class and what they had to offer. Um, so to me, it was really a real positive. Um, saying that, I have coached in the spring a boys team way back in the 80s. And I hated it. I just didn't. I felt that the the seniors were checked out by late spring. Um, I just felt it was a different vibe, totally. Uh, you know, when you come into the fall season, uh, everybody's excited. Just getting back to school, first day of school. You, it's just a different vibe completely. Uh, so I, I'm hoping that the spring won't be that that what I felt anyway back in the '80s with the boys team. Um, you know, I have six seniors. If our season begins late spring, if it, that may be an issue that comes up for them. I mean, they've got pressure and stress of just graduating, um, you know, looking for either going to grad school or finding a job. I don't know if they'll check out, too. I mean, I just don't know that. So it'll be interesting to see in the spring what happens. Um, but for the fall, it was really a joy to be around these kids. Um, again, it was, again, having a, not a loss on your record, um, that was fun in a sense. I am curious uh, with the potential of spring competition. And as you mentioned, it may start later in the spring than earlier in the spring. I'm curious what advantages might there, maybe not necessarily, as you mentioned, for the seniors, but for the team that would come back for 2021 22 to have uh, as full of a season as possible in the spring. And then, should things get back into non pandemic times by the fall, then turn around and go into the fall having just played, you know, maybe as late as May? Yeah, I, you know, again, I have not experienced that yet, but I my guess would be uh, be good because we do have a spring season normally. We have a, a non traditional year where we get to basically what we did in the fall this year. We did the practice and train in the spring. Um, you know, I, we're very limited as college coaches to be with the kids year round. I mean, and so we have really short windows for them. So to me, that would be a plus, I believe, uh, especially for the younger players coming back, having kind of a, a season. And turn around and have another season three or four months later, it'll keep them motivated to stay fit. I think in the in the short summer months, um, I think they'll be excited to have a full season. Um, so I, I do think it'll be a plus. Again, I, I'm, I'm more concerned for the seniors. You know, I know they're under stress, just wanting to, to fulfill their four year, you know, having a senior season, having a, a senior last day. These are very important things for, for, for these individuals. And I, I hope that does happen for them. Um, you know, if you want to be the big picture, though, you know, a lot of colleges will take advantage of this year because, um, you know, they may be able to have those players come back to compete again uh, in the fifth year as like a red shirt. You know, LC is not built that way. You know, I recruit kids generally to graduate in four years, if not earlier. I mean, I've had a, I had my goalie last year graduate as a junior. I mean, it happens a lot that, that these players will graduate a semester early. So. For me to get these players back for another year would be awesome, but that's not really, we weren't built that way. Um, some colleges are, they can take advantage of that. So it will be interesting next, next fall in our conference, which, which school was able to have a five-year student now. You know, that, those players that play another year are going to be a lot better because they're a year older. Um, so it will be interesting to see how we will do or how we will compete with those schools that were able to, to bring back a fifth year senior in a sense. So we're talking to head coach of women's soccer at Lewis and Clark, Jim Tercy on lcpioneers.com live. And let's shift that focus into the first year student athletes who were part of your class of 2020, 21 for recruiting. Uh, what did you see from them in the fall practices you were able to get through? What was the experience like for those first years? Yeah. You know, we, we brought in, uh, I think it was nine freshmen. Um, and, you know, again, when you bring them in a, a normal year, you know, you got two weeks, and in those two weeks to see them play, you don't really see a lot. Um, they're nervous. They're not 
they're not comfortable necessarily, you know, with how they how they feel towards other players or, you know, what they might think of themselves. So this year we were able to really kind of dig deep and dive into things and do a lot of things on the field practice wise. And as a course of probably the first three, four weeks, they really settled in and and really found their, their groove. Um, they're very close knit. That was the best part because, you know, you know, coming into this season, having nine kids all live practically in the same dorm, which was very helpful. Number one, um, they they were experiencing diff- different things with all this going around them than I think the upperclassmen were. Uh, they were enjoying all of this. They were enjoying being locked down for two days. I think just to hang out with each other. So I think for them, they had a really fun and a positive experience under lockdown per se, uh, going to college in this environment. I think they just really just thought it was awesome just to be able to get away from home, I think, having any kind of experience, but being able to be together as nine freshmen and really hit it off and they really did enjoy each other. Um, to me, that was probably, you know, it could have gone totally bad for us. I mean, but they could have been split up in different dorms. They could have not really clicked with each other and it would have been a disaster, but I was very fortunate. And again, I got to give a ton of credit to my two captains and the whole upperclassmen to really encourage them and get them involved and do things um, and treat them as one of, uh, you know, as a, as a player that's going to make a factor, be a factor for us in the season. So the combination of a, a great upper class that really is a bunch of nice kids that took them in and them themselves having just hit it off as a group. Um, it was, it was, again, it was the best fall I could have ever asked for not having games. I mean, it really truly was, it was, a joy to be around them. They really progressed. They learned a lot. They, they, they showed their skills. Um, I think they impressed the upperclassmen. They feel good about coming into the season, playing with them, um, building on what we did last year. So, again, I, I don't know. Spring. I'm hoping spring will happen for us. I'm hoping for me for me to be a late spring season. I think that would be better for us because, as you talked earlier about going into next year, um, but we'll take any season they give us, and I think we'll, we'll enjoy it. Uh, Again, I'm hoping for the senior state case that it does happen more than anything else. And we've been talking a lot about experiences, right? Even on the show outside of this interview, talking to other student athletes, coaches, different members of the college, and it's really getting a look of what's been happening over the course of the pandemic and especially the fall semester through their eyes. And so as a coach, I'm curious to get this perspective, recruiting and doing something that I'm sure as a coach who's been doing as long as you maybe becomes a little bit of a cyclical process, maybe have a routine. How has it been different because of the pandemic for you? Well, I, I really, the the incoming class or the incoming two, three classes, I'll be coming next two, three years, these kids are panicking. I've never felt a sense of, of, um, of students that are not being seen because nobody gets to see them play. So they're all virtual if, they just, if you see them at all in these little type of uh, – Two minute snippets, they touch juggle the ball or something. So they're really, they're really under a lot of stress. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough to have uh, two early decisions um, right off the bat that has already committed, and then we have thirty early action kids that have applied that we've targeted. And yesterday was last night. Actually, it was the uh, the, pa- the packages came out. Their acceptance letters came out yesterday evening. So I had two text me right away saying they've, they've committed already. They've committed themselves. I, I find that that's what's happening. I think kids are, are committing. We've lost a few that we really wanted because they their package came out two days earlier, uh, and they committed right then. So, they, again, I think they, they, everybody wants to to find a home and know they have a home. So people are jumping at things right away. I mean, usually this takes a process of, oh, I get, I get my letter. Uh, I'll wait two, three weeks, look at all the other offers there are, and then kind of make decisions over a month period. This year it's like, Instantly. I mean, it's once they, somebody somebody gets their letter, they're committed. And I think that hurts us. It, it also might help us in some cases. Um, the regular admission kids that are applying late, um, you know, I just don't know. I mean, I don't know. They just probably don't have it at the same urgency the others do. But there's a lot less of them this year. Most of them applied early. So, um, you know, I'm not able to go out and see anybody play. So I'm basically... Um, at the mercy of, you know, other coaches or just see a little bit old, old video of them. Um, I am scheduled to do a ID camp. I've never done ID camp. I just, there's no need to in the past, but I'm doing one in January for the Portland Thorns. They're doing a college ID camp. So I'm going to do a couple sessions. So I just see some of these kids 
um, up close and they didn't know me. Uh, so that will happen in January. But I think pretty much my my recruiting class for next fall is done. Um, there's a few kids that are going to apply late, but overall, I'm pretty much completed it. Um, you know, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if let's say all six of my seniors decided to come back, well, that I wouldn't need anybody, but that's not always going to happen. So some schools may be in that position. So that's what I'm saying. It's a very strange year for recruiting, I think, for most colleges, especially Division three. Where um, you know there's, there could be class, there could be schools that bring everybody back for another year. They may not even, you know, add anybody. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm pretty pleased overall. Uh, I said I've got four players I've committed. Uh, I have 24 on my roster this this spring, so I have 24 on my roster. And I do have six seniors that are on that. So we're looking to fill six spots um, if none of those come, if none of my seniors return. Uh, you're watching lcpioneers.com live presented by PioStream Tuesday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live. And our guest today is Jim Tercy, head coach of women's soccer. Let's close with this. Uh, you're a lifelong Portlander and, and have a lot of experience with the city in the, in the Pacific Northwest. When you do try to describe this area to people, especially now that people can't come as easily to campus or come as easily to Portland, what are some of the highlights that you always share about this area? Well, you know, I, I try to, I try to see if the player I'm recruiting is to fit this area. So this is quite unique. It's different. You know, keep Portland weird. You know, is the motto as the motto here. Um, th- there's there's certain qualities here that a certain a certain individual uh, will fit or will not fit here. So that's the first thing is I'm trying to, you know, gauge what that person is. You know, uh, but you know, Portland itself has had some issues in the past year or so. Um, but again, you know, I always try to tell kids, you know, you when you go to college, no matter what college, that college is your city. I mean, for the first two years, you you barely leave the campus itself. So, you know, to me, it's really getting the kids to come to the campus, see the campus. If I can get them there, that's eighty percent of my job is done. Honestly, it's it's done right there. It's just because becomes then a an issue of hey, can we have the right package? Can we can we, you know. Can we get here in a sense that's not going to cost them an arm and a leg or feel like they're just burdened with a huge uh, loan? Um, so there's a few things that they have to check my boxes off. But generally, if they're coming to campus and willing to come to campus, I say that my job is pretty much done. It's then it's selling the parents, make sure the parents feel comfortable with them. Um, so, you know, it's, it does change year to year because environments change around you. I've changed a lot and my recruiting process here at school. When I first got here, you know, I was told in the sense, that, hey, we want uh, we want kids that are well-rounded, not necessarily great athletes, but we want kids that will, in a sense, be a reflection of the campus, what they want this campus to look like. You know, in the last two years, I was given the, the okay to actually go out and find quality soccer players that also meet those requirements, but it's not a priority where, you know, they have to be a person that, you know, soccer is it. I mean, they, you know, they do it. They do many other things. So I think, I think our team has shown that in my recruiting, especially the players that we're getting now are really talented players that can compete and want to compete at a high level and are willing to train year round. And, and I think once I got the school blessing in that sense, then I went that way. I mean, I'm, you gotta be a division three, that'd be very much what the school wants. Um, and you gotta accept that as a, as a coach, as a recruiter, because, you know, why fight that? You know, I, I, I recruit, I had 30 kids every year, easy to recruit here. It's not an issue. But when the school allowed me to recruit kids that, that really were soccer players that really wanted to learn and be good and actually wanted to win and compete. Well, that makes my, it makes it more fun for me as a coach, obviously. And I think for the players that are around that you bring in, they enjoy that more, you know, it's very difficult in, in my first five, six years here to recruit kids that had that, desire and, and wanted to, but you couldn't bring kids around them that met that same uh, desire. So they get frustrated because, you know, the school was pulling them in 20 different directions and, you know, it just, it just wasn't, it wasn't feasible. So why fight that? So I, I kind of recruited to what the school wanted. And once the school wanted to win, I think that was important for the new president that they wanted to see winners out here. Uh, it, it was easy to do to the season of the career. We, we won, you know, we finished in the top four last year. And that's not by accident. It's because I was able to bring kids in that I think uh, had the same desires.
Yeah, Northwest Conference record for wins last year in the fall 2019 season. And so we'll see what happens with the spring. I know you talked about some of the concerns uh, based on prior experience uh, a while back with, with the spring. I'm sure as the rumor has it that you don't love the rain either. It might be too much rain coming up in the spring as well. We'll have to see. Uh, Coach Jim Tercy, always appreciate the conversation. And thanks for taking the time for us today on LCPioneers.com Live. Thank you. As head coach of women's soccer, Jim Tercy, talking to us on the show. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the joke uh, with uh, many of the student athletes I've talked about, uh, Coach Tercy joins Lewis and Clark right at 2010, the first year that I was here doing Pio Stream and play by play only. And then I left for about three or four years, came back, started doing the, the radio side of things again, and then now athletic communications. And uh, many times I always like to ask some of the student athletes, you know, give me a tidbit about one of your your coach's quirks and one for coach Tercy is just absolutely dislikes the rain. So maybe in the spring season, that might be one thing that uh, coach Tercy wouldn't prefer, but of course we'll see what happens and we'll keep you updated too with the latest information regarding competition in the spring, lcpioneers.com slash COVID. That is our athletics related update site. When it comes to Lewis and Clark in response to COVID-19, there is a link to the ongoing response to the pandemic uh, to the Lewis and Clark College site too. So if it's not specific to athletics, that site will also answer questions there. But uh, when we know details on schedules and what's confirmed or what's finalized, certainly we'll pass it along on that uh, that link. And then, of course, you can read about the cancellation of football, men's and women's basketball. That was announced on Monday and a joint statement by Lewis and Clark and Willamette. Uh, thanks to Coach Tercy for joining us today. We will talk to Brian Detweiler uh, Bedell for our final show of 2021 we'll have some reruns coming up the final two weeks of the 2020 calendar as we step away for winter break we'll return in january for more live shows brian is the director of the bait center for entrepreneurship and leadership and so we'll get a glimpse inside what the bait center does for all students at lewis and clark and it has had a tremendous impact on many many students but certainly too the student athletes pool uh, just recently, Matthew Brown of men's basketball and Ramez Adia of men's tennis won a competition called Invent Oregon. And many uh, of their stories centralize around some of the help and encouragement they got from the Bait Center. So that's something that we'll talk about tomorrow with Brian Detweiler Bedell. Big thanks again to Jim Tersey for joining us on the show. And of course, as always, thank you for taking time to join us every uh, Tuesday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live. We really have enjoyed doing this show since the last day of March earlier this year. I'm Ryan Goff. We'll see you again tomorrow for more of the show. Until then, take care. Have a great rest of your Thursday. We'll see you again on lcpioneers.com live, presented by PioStream. Goodbye, everybody. I'm Ann Bentley. I'm an associate professor of chemistry. And in this research group, I supervise the two students working in the Rogers program this summer in our lab. The brown bag experience is a good chance for students to get experience presenting their work that they've done in the lab, especially to an audience that's not technical. What's intriguing about the brown bag experience is it incorporates all of the Rogers program. So I'm able to hear people in the psychology department and what research they're doing, but it also gives us, gives us the opportunity to share our research with the greater science community at Lewis and Clark. And for incoming students, um, the summer program is really beneficial for getting opportunity in research. So um, I've had the opportunity for research in the past, but other students may not have the same opportunities. So it's nice to work in a professional lab setting and potentially have the opportunity to publish a paper, which looks really good moving on into uh, doing um, professional research out in the field. The students grow a lot during the summer in their ability to learn the techniques and apply the techniques and suggest their own ideas for what could come next and interpret their data. It's just a big, if, usually if they haven't done research before, they learn a lot in that short period of time. I think everyone should take an uh, intro to chemistry because um, the chemistry department here is phenomenal. Um, everyone I've known has had a good experience with everyone in that department, so I think it was a worthwhile course to take. What is one class that everyone should take at Lewis and Clark? Um, I really enjoyed education in a complex world. You kind of get to discuss all the issues that exist within education today, and you get to kind of explore that by going to classrooms firsthand and volunteering with children, which I thought was a really wonderful experience. 
One class that everybody should take at Lewis and Clark is anything with Kundai Trundo. Um, I think he definitely changed how I thought about rhetoric and media studies and just education in general. For me, it was international affairs, just intro to international affairs, because I think uh, it really gives a good perspective on important issues around the world.